Do you enjoy your supermarket shopping, Kate? I do. There are certain shops I love to just go up and down the aisle. Do you have method? Do you no. every time go in and go around the outside, maybe then up and... No? Depends on the shop. Well, I investigate this week supermarket psychology. Let's have a look. Ever gone to the supermarket for, say, milk and bread and come out with a completely chock-a-block trolley full of stuff? I'm terrible at that. It happens to me a lot. Well, Stuart from Darwin, who's studying psychology, wants to know whether supermarket design influences what we purchase. Well, Stuart, I'm here to find out. I think it does. I'm taking some of this back. I don't need that plan for a start. I have no I don't even like plans. I started afresh with the one man who would know all the answers. Please do not scream and yell. Do not chuck any tanties again, because it was embarrassing yesterday. Paul, well, what exactly is shopping psychology or supermarket psychology in this case? Well, it's a technique that marketers use mm. to find out ways that consumers shop in supermarkets to manipulate the whole experience so you often buy more or maybe buy things that are against your better interests. True, true. They've never tricked me, I don't think. I reckon they have. You reckon? I reckon they have. Some of those tricks work on our subconscious, such as the use of colour. Red being the most noticeable colour in the spectrum, grabs our attention. Green evokes fresh and healthy, and blue apparently releases our trust hormones. Well, there's been some research that's been done that suggests that if you put the fresh produce at the beginning, people are going to spend a lot more time in the supermarket. So what they're trying to do is confront you with this idea that it's a relaxed, comfortable, fresh place to get you to actually spend longer. And if you spend longer in the supermarket, you actually spend more money as well. Music and lighting all add to the relaxed atmosphere. And once we're happily shopping, research has shown exactly how we behave. Consumers don't go up and down the aisles in a methodical way, they use the perimeter and drop in and out of each of the aisles. True. We really only use about 25% of the whole supermarket most of the time. So most of us stick to the outside. So that's where the staples like bread and milk are put. And we apparently spend $2 more when we shop in a counterclockwise direction. There's also research going on into exactly what we look at when we shop. <laughs> Very strong glasses. Okay, so the way it works, there's a, there's a camera which is uh, recording the, the, the scene. Right. Um, in this case, the shelves. And there's another one which you can see here, which is um, uh, bouncing off this special little monocle here to, re to record how my eye is uh, moving around. Uh, well, the eye track is a special device that uh, literally measures where people look and it allows us literally to see through their eyes as they're, uh, as, they're, as they're going shopping. Most of us are pretty lazy in where we look. Generally in the middle of the eye, or yeah. the middle of the, you know. Yeah, it's from about sort of just Eye above, level. <laughs> eye level, that's right, yeah. Eye level slightly above and down to about, say, waist height is yeah, the, right. sort of the, the real sort of uh, area of interest there tending to scan left to right more so than, than up and down, which is also uh, something we've seen quite a lot of. Right. And so that has ramifications for how you how, how brands block their, their products on shelves, should they do that vertically or horizontally, depending on the type of shopper they're trying to... Uh, oh, there's my eye. Yeah. <laughs> and then there are those emotional purchases. Baby foods. Mm. Very emotional purchase. It is. And people think a lot about them. And one of the things that they do is that they put the baby foods away from most of the rest of the supermarket because they know that people will stop mm. and think yeah. and start to get emotionally involved. Uh, so, are you okay? Yeah. Push on. Can yeah. Push on? Sure. No, 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 that's I fine. I just want to go back to the condoms. <laughs> okay. How do you avoid um, being sucked in, by the way, the shop's plan? Well, I mean, there are old favourites, things like shop with a list, you know, and if you shop with a list, I know it's boring, yeah. but if you go to the process of, go through the process of writing down what you need, you're just going to be thinking about it a little bit more when you get to the supermarket. Mm. The other thing is don't shop with people who stress you out, whether it's kids or some other loved one, yep. uh, because again, what will happen is that you'll make decisions that aren't good for you. Yeah. The other one is, and again, this is a classic one, don't shop when you're hungry. And we oh, don't actually learn. I'm bad at that. Yeah, me too. All businesses are going to try and use psychological interventions to get us to behave in a particular way. But the reality is that as long as we're aware of that, we can defend ourselves that little bit better. I really enjoy that. So I do a lot of grocery shopping. I don't like grocery shopping myself. I quite like, quite therapeutic at times. Yeah.